Okay, I don't have a lot of slides here, and these are mostly proposals um, for what we want to do, and I'll talk a little bit about what we do now. Okay, so um, there's three topics here, really. API compatibility, ABI compatibility, and packaging. Um, so real products are shipping with SPDK, so now is the time. We have to deal with this. Um, you know, before, you know, a year ago, two years ago, it was the Wild West. Nobody was shipping. Um, the code was open source. We could do whatever we wanted. That's going to need to change. So here's what we have today. Um, we do four time-based releases a year. This has never occurred, but we will backport fixes that don't require an API change um, by request. Nobody's made a request. Um, and we will accept backport patches to these four checkpoints, basically a year. Um, but those four releases, the API can never change, even if we do a later, you know, dot one release or something to fix a bug. Uh, we also have a header file that has preprocessor macros that tell you the version. So if you're writing software that needs to work with multiple versions of SVDK, you have a way to detect what version you're on and change the code as needed. So for API compatibility, um, there's two terms I'm, I'm going to use uh, that I'm making up. Um, when a header is marked as uh, stable, we'll try not to change it. So I, this is, I'm going to propose we mark header files in different states because different parts of the code are in different levels of stability. Um, so when, when I say stable, I mean we're going to try not to change it. I don't mean we guarantee we're not going to change it. I mean we're going to try. Um, and we'll also communicate API changes well in advance um, by marking things as deprecated, um, at least one release prior to changing them. Um, things marked unstable is uh, we'll do whatever we want whenever we want, right? Um, it's, this is for like brand new code, code where we're, we're not confident in the design, um, things that haven't settled yet. You know, and so if somebody comes along and has a better idea out there and submits a patch to us, we want to be able to accept that. Okay, so this assumes quite a bit of knowledge about the current um, repository, but things that I think could be marked stable today. Uh, NVMe.h. Um, the NVMe library um, hasn't had an API breaking change in more than a year, and that's not on purpose, that's just because it's stable. Um, env.h has had new APIs added, but um, it's an important enough header that I think we need to deal with some uh, level of stability here. This abstracts out um, non-POSIX functionality that we need from the environment, um, like allocating huge pages and such. And it's, a, it's effectively a wrapper around DPDK. Um, IOChannel.h is another candidate. This is one of the core functionalities in SPDK for allocating per thread context. And I, I think we, any changes here require massive changes throughout the code base, so I think we should be careful about this one. Um, then there's a bunch of minor headers, log.h, NVMe spec.h, of course, that's just defining all the structures from the NVMe specification, so that one's fairly stable. Well, it's changing in a backward compatible way. Right. Yes, um, same with NVMF spec. Uh, when we make changes to that, it's always backward compatible. And then there's just lots of little minor header files that probably could be stable, utility things. Um, unlikely candidates with varying degrees of unlikeliness um, NVMF.h, I just rewrote that entire thing. Uh, so I don't think that's a candidate yet. Um, there's still, NVMF as an entire um, spec and as a way to serve block storage is still recent. Um, it's still settling on the best way to write an NVMF target in software. Um, I think we're going to continue uh, as a community to um, come up with new use cases and understand 
um, better strategies for managing this. So I, I don't foresee that stabilizing um, for at least some time. Uh, bdev.h, this one is more on the border for me. Um, I think we've spent the last year doing a whole lot of work uh, to flesh out the features of the BDEV layer. Um, and I think it's really coming along. Um, so this is one of those that um, may shift over to the stable category relatively soon. Um, but there's a few more things I want to do there, and, and um, mostly from feedback here. Uh, SCSI.h, this is the SCSI library header. Um, this one just needs to be cleaned up, but then otherwise would be stable, I think. Uh, we just haven't put in the effort to really think about it as an API. Vhost.h, this is also new. Same story as NVMF. Blob.h, um, we've got a whole backlog of things we want to change on that. Okay, so that's my idea for API compatibility. We can discuss your feedback on that uh, shortly. But basically, mark headers is either stable or unstable. Um, and, and try our best to shift things to the stable category as long as we are confident that we understand um, that we're doing things the right way for that, that module. All right, so ABI compatibility. This one's a joke, I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, maybe someday, maybe at the next summit. Uh, we can't get the API stable, all right? Um, anyway, if, if you really desperately need ABI compatibility, we can maybe talk on the side. Um, all right, so now the meat of the presentation. Um, I, I do think we're at a point in SPDK's uh, development where we can talk about packaging. Um, DPDK is now packaged, which was the real blocker for us that, that we depend on DPDK. It's packaged on a, a variety of operating systems, um, so we could depend on that package. So there's a, a number of questions about um, what we would package and how we would package it, what makes sense to package. Um, so just to give you an idea, this, these are the things in SPDK kind of at a high level. There's applications, you know, the NVMF target, iSCSI target, um, et cetera. Um, and then there's libraries. And I don't think those belong all in the same package necessarily. You would, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Uh, so I see at least two options for packaging the, the libraries, um, you know, as a development kit. We can either package static libraries or package a single large shared library. And then we also have to, of course, include in that package the headers. Um, so. I'm leaning toward, and, and I know a number of um, my colleagues at Intel are leaning toward packaging a, a shared library because it's easy. Uh, you just link it in. It's one thing. You link it into your application, and you're done. And um, then we can deal with ABI compatibility later on that one library. Uh, static libraries are, do have some pros. Um, you can only link, you only have to link in what you need. Um, but I think if you care that much, you can just download the code, build it yourself as a static library and link in what you need. So that's kind of what we're feeling out right now. Um, all right, in terms of packaging the applications, um, we recently made a change to where we had a bunch of separate applications, um, the NVMF target, the iSCSI target, the vhost target, we still have those separate applications available, but we also have one unified application uh, that can do all of these things simultaneously. And so we're thinking maybe we package that um, and call it SPDK, and then you could install SPDK and it would come with the unified target and the CLI tool. And you start it up and you use the CLI tool to configure, you know, turn on vhost or turn on NVMF um, as you need. So I think that would be a pretty decent experience for people. Um, 
who are looking to just use the code in SPDK, not necessarily develop their own thing. Uh, and then we'd probably name the package of libraries SPDK devil, right? Or, or whatever the convention is on the operating system for those sorts of things. All right, so the next step is once we settle on this, and I hope to have discussion here, um, is to move forward and figure out which distros we want to target first um, with whatever strategy we get. So with that, I'll take questions and we can have feedback. Go ahead. Hold on a second, hold on a second. So I understand you guys have good CI, which is awesome. That's great news. Have you considered when doing packaging, literally doing patch by patch packaging so that people downstream can consume you in a binary form for a continuous integration of your consumers downstream? I mean, any, yeah, we would absolutely make it part of the CI system. Cool. Um, it, and publish know, to a repo every time? Yeah, every patch would get built Perfect. into the package. Um, I'm, I'm sure, because otherwise it would break, right? So we would absolutely make the packaging automatic on every build. Um, but we would still do the, the four releases a year just because of that's a, a management tool more of than course. anything. Okay, that's cool. Excellent. Yep. Would you package a source repo for the four releases a year? We, we could. Um, we do the releases today on GitHub, which comes with a source tarball, but we could do a source, you know, package um, if the distros wanted to pick that up. Uh, I don't know how much demand there would be for that, um, <coughs> considering it's pretty easy to just get the code off of GitHub. Um, If you wanted to use those stable releases that show up four times a year or whatever, and you wanted to develop code to test in those environments, you could use Devel, but you might want to look at all the other bits of source and, and so on and so forth like that. So yeah. yeah, certainly if there's demand, that's not significantly more effort than everything else. Um. So, you know, I work for Millinox. One, what we would vote for, for me, was the top line, but I'd add one more line, which is uh, for embedded systems, people want to use uh, Yocto as well. Okay. So those are my two, two cents. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. We can add it to the list. Another one here, Nate. Are you seeing people use this enough with containers where you have to uh, consider the lightweight bare metal operating systems that support container distributions, like CoreOS or whatever it's called now and Red Hat Atomic? Um, I don't think we have great insight into the distros that people are using it on right now because we release source, so they just run it on whatever. Um, in the bug reports, we get some view of that world, it's a lot of Ubuntu and Fedora, um, but I think those are dev systems. So um, I don't think we know, I think we need the feedback. Um, you know, what distros are people deploying this on? Um, that information is very valuable if we're going forward with packaging. Any other questions for Ben? All right, thanks Ben. <laughs>